Hey YouTubers. Um, Alright, so now we're on to Chapter 5, Information Technology in the ATI Fundamentals book. Question 1. Uh, let's see here. Where's question 1? Question 1. A nurse is preparing information for change of shift report. Which of the following information should the nurse include in the report? The client's input and output for the shift, the client's blood pressure from the previous day, a bone scan that is scheduled for today, or D, the medication routine from the medication administration record? The answer to that question is C. The bone scan is important because the nurse might have to modify the client's care to accommodate leaving the unit. Okay, question two. A nurse enters the client room and finds him sitting in his chair. He states, I fell in the shower, but I got myself back up into my chair. How should the nurse document this in the client's chart? A. The client fell in the shower. B. The client states he fell in the shower and was able to get himself back into his chair. C. The nurse should not document this information in the chart because she did not witness the fall. Or D. The client fell in the shower but is now resting comfortably. I always find this answer funny. B. Uh, is the answer to question 2. By writing that the client states the information is subjective data. Okay, so three, a nursing instructor is reviewing documentation with a group of nursing students. Which of the following legal guidelines should they follow when documenting in a, in a client's record? Select all that apply. A, cover errors with correction fluid and write, uh, and write in the correction information. B, put the date and time on all entries. C, document objective data, leaving out opinions. D, use as many abbreviations as possible. Or E, wait until the end of the shift to document. Uh, the answer to question three is B, C, um, looks like just B and C. All right, B is correct because the day and time confirm the record of the correct sequences of events. C is correct because documentation must be factual, descriptive, objective, and without opinions or criticism. Question number four. Okay, this is a big question. All right, the skin barrier covering a client's intestinal fistula keeps falling off when she stands up to ambulate. The nurse has reapplied it twice during the current shift, but it remains intact only when the client is suspine uh, in bed. The nurse telephoned the physical therapist about the difficulties containing the drainage from the fistula, so the therapist did not ambulate the client today. The client sat in a chair during lunch with an absorbent pad over the fistula. The client ate all the food on her tray. The wound care nurse confirmed that she will see the client later today. The client stated she frustrated at not ha uh, she's frustrated at not having physical therapy, but the nurse thinks the client will uh, welcomed having a day to rest. Which of the following inter information should the nurse include in the change of shift report? Select all that apply. A. The physical therapist did not ambulate the client's day. B. The skin barrier seal stays on in bed but loosens when the client stands. C. The client seemed to welcome having a day off from physical therapy. D. The wound care nurse will see the client later today. E. The client ate all the food on her lunch tray. The answers to question four are A, B, and D. All right, A is correct because the oncoming nurse needs to know about any changes or deviations from the client's plan of care, such as missing physical therapy session. B is correct because the current problem about adhesion of the skin barrier is important information uh, the oncoming nurse needs to know and address. C is correct because the oncoming nurse needs to know about any consultations that will take place during the shift. Okay, moving on to question number five. Sorry guys, I just woke up getting my morning joe here. Hmm, that's delicious. All right, question number five. A nurse is receiving a provider's prescription by telephone for morphine for a client who is reporting moderate to severe pain. Which of the following nursing actions are appropriate? Select all that apply. Okay. A. Repeat the details of prescription back to the provider. B. Have another nurse listen to the telephone prescription. C. Obtain the prescriber's signature on the prescription within 24 hours. D. Decline the verbal prescription because it's not an emergency situation. E. Tell the church nurse that the provider has prescribed morphine by the telephone. The answer to question number five is A, B, C. 
A is correct because the nurse should repeat the medication's name, dosage, time, or interval, route, and any other pertinent information back to the provider and receive the document, receive and document confirmation. B is correct because having another nurse listen to the telephone prescription is a safety precaution that helps prevent medication errors due to miscommunication. And C, C is correct because the provider must sign the prescription within the time frame the facility specifies in its policies. Uh, parentheses generally 24 hours okay and that ends our session for chapter 5 information technology in the fundamentals ATI book